Today it's time for a professional match of StarCraft 2 and what I've got for you is a Zerg versus Terran on World of Sleepers LE. Spawning here in the top right hand corner of the map and playing with the blue Zerg drones. From South Korea we have none other than Impact. And his opponent in the opposite corner playing with the red Terran SCVs, likewise also from South Korea we are looking inside of the main of Cure. Now I know I say this about a few of the pro games that I've casted recently and I know in one of them I actually featured Cure as well, but I feel like neither of these two players is getting nearly as much attention as they deserve. So I just had a quick look on Alugulek, a statistics website for StarCraft 2 that basically keeps track of all of the offline and online games that are being played in StarCraft 2. It gives a ranking to every single match and then it ranks the pro gamers according to each other as far as their recent results go. When it comes to the current top 8 in the world, right? At number 1 we have Serral, 2 Maru, 3 Dark, 4 TY, 5 Solar, 6 Stats, 7 Innovation, and here it comes. At number 8 we have Cure. Yet I can guarantee you that pretty much everyone, you know, that's regularly watching StarCraft 2 is very familiar with all of the names in the top 7. Yet I feel like no one really talks nearly as much about Cure as he deserves. So in these uh, next couple of months, and by the way, uh, for those of you curious, Impact, as of me making this video, is the rank 27 on that website. So still a ridiculously good player. But over the next couple of months, uh, I do want to try and see if I can feature some more of these quote-unquote lesser-known pro gamers. I mean, it sounds weird to say, because if you follow the scene very actively, you're very familiar with the names. But personally, I mean, I, I watch a lot of the big names, especially like the names in Top 7, for example. I cast as many of those games as I can, but I feel like I don't, I don't feature others nearly as often as they deserve, especially in like the Top 25 of the world or so. So I want to try and see if I can shine a light on some of those pro gamers and we can hopefully figure out what their playstyle is like together. By the way, um, I made a video yesterday on Disco Bloodbath LE, where I also casted a professional match of StarCraft between Hearthstone and Euthermal. I'll go ahead and post a link to that one in the information box in the top right-hand corner of this video. Now, I spent about a good minute or so ranting at the beginning of that video about the flashing lights inside of the main and the natural. It turns out, literally like an hour after I posted that video, Blizzard posted a hotfix where they updated a bunch of the maps. And one of the things that they updated is indeed the flashing lights on the map. So it's pretty cool. I mean, this one is not played on an updated version of World of Sleepers just yet. Although actually I've got the list of changes that they made to some of the maps right here on another monitor. Um, they've updated a couple of things on Disco Bloodbath, on Triton, and then on Winter's Gate as E. Ooh, nice catch actually right there by Kira. That's really critical. Uh, but yeah, they have updated a couple of the maps slightly to make it easier to wall, to make it easier to do Reaper Scouts, and then also to make it uh, a little bit less distracting. Like, for example, those stupid flashing lights. So anyways, they're gone. I mean, I don't think I have any influence on that. Because, uh, well, it was literally hotfix like a couple of hours after I posted the video. Um, so there's no way that that decision was made, uh, you know, with my response in time. But it feels good to, to complain about it and then immediately see change, right? Regardless, killing that tumor is a pain in the butt. Let me try and talk about that for a little bit. So back in the day, the early game Reaper, and by the way, this game is as standard as it goes so far, but back in the day, the early game Reaper essentially uh, was meant to kill drones, right? If you get one or two drone kills, that was amazing. However, Zerg players got a lot better at defending, so what happened over time is that, well, drone kills didn't really happen anymore, so the best you were gonna get is maybe a couple of Zergling kills, right? However, Zerg players got so good as well that also Zerglings didn't really die. I mean, maybe one Zergling at best. So what it all comes down to right now is that the Reaper early on is meant for scouting purposes, obviously, but then also for killing the first tumor. And getting the first tumor is actually quite big because right now it forces Impact to spend a bunch of energy right here on additional queens, um, or yeah, uh, to spend the energy on a couple of queens that he's got to uh, to actually prioritize those tumors once again because he needs that creep out by the time that the Hellions really start roaming the map here, which will likely happen in just a little bit. I gotta say, I like the fact yeah, he already got himself Nematized Carapace, but I'm actually a little surprised he got Nematized Carapace, but then he didn't do any scouting with them. Hmm. Oh my god. That Sagara voice, right? The queen voice of the Korean announcer. Pretty sick. Anyways, um, yeah, that's actually kind of curious. I, I wonder what he's going to do with those. So if I can theory craft for just a little bit, because this game is about as standard as it goes, um, nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, a bit of a faster third command center here for Cure, but if you can theory craft for a little bit, um, as to uh, why he decided to go for such a quick overlord speed upgrade. Generally speaking, right? 
you want to defend your bases with vision. So say Hellions start roaming the map. There's a couple of them out right now. Yeah, there they go. Um, you want to know where the Hellions are going to come in from before they actually get into your mineral line, right? And one of the ways you can scout that is obviously with creep spread. Now, I think what Impact is likely going to do is push these overlords a little bit further forward every single time that the creep moves as well. At least that's what I'm assuming. I've been thinking about that for a little bit. I think that would be a really cool way of playing because that way it can sort of stay ahead of the creep spread and then see uh, the perimeter of your creep and that way you can hopefully spot the Hellions from incoming uh, before they actually jump to your mineral line. Although, so far, he hasn't really made a lot of use out of that overlord speed just yet. One Overlord right there does get shut down. Cure, by the way, always known for that safe and solid playstyle. This man takes about as few risks as, as you possibly can. I mean, technically speaking, he took this command center a little bit early. So normally we see that command center coming up at about a four and a half minute mark. Um, Cure decided to make it at like 4.15 or so. Maybe 4.20. 4.20 CC. You know what they say. Um... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but um, it doesn't really matter too much. Like, Cure, generally speaking, is the kind of guy who plays safe and solid, safe and sound, and then he just simply starts piling on the pressure, and pressure, and pressure. And at some point, he gets that tempo advantage, and if you give him a little bit too much leeway, he will overwhelm you. So that's likely what we're going to see out of Cure here as well, already going for his beloved um, bio-based army. A couple of benches actually coming in at an angle that they uh, did not quite, were, or they weren't quite expected. Impact, do you have an Overseer? Oh, he's morphing it. Why would you morph it over in the natural? I'm a little bit surprised by that, to be completely frank with you. Anyways, eight drones end up going down there. Apparently, uh, Impact uh, is going to be able to shoot these benches away for the time being. But they are mostly just allowing that small little tempo advantage that Cure is always looking for. So Cure is very good at just continuously piling on the pressure, right? So apparently there were a couple of Bailings that wanted to go into that Dropper Lord over there. Not gonna happen, as it's morphing into an Overseer. Ugh, not gonna happen either. The Viking managed to get the kill, and it's scouting all of those incoming bits of aggression from the Zerg just fine. Uh, nicely done so far, though. Looks like one of those Benchies ended up getting killed, and while a couple of drones were picked off as well. I mean, eight drones at, like, the four-minute mark, very painful. Eight drones at, like, the seven-minute mark, that's not nearly as painful anymore, because Impact can easily replace them at this point in the game. The main issue right now with uh, with losing drones is that you have to replace them, and that follow-up bio push, just like, for example, this one right here, can become a lot more scary. So here we go. This is a hit squad right here, meant with killing the fourth base. Now, luckily, there were a couple of banelings with that roly-poly upgrade, so Triple Hooks is done, so that does mean that the fourth base will stay alive here for the time being. Already another base taken a little bit closer to the natural here as well. In the meantime, though, fourth command center also coming up from Cure as he is building up his influence in this game very, very nicely. 1-1 one, one is done. Usually we see the big pushes from Terran right when 2-2 two, two finishes. So there we go. Plus 1 or plus 2 immediately starts and then uh, he's likely also going to start plus 2 uh, weapons or plus 2 armor rather for his infantry in just a second once he has uh, the resources to do so. So it's going to be a bio mine based army. This is the new standard apparently in South Korea. I mean, it's not really the new standard because it was played for a very long time. <laughs> but people once again have shifted away from siege tanks and are once again favoring Widow Mines, even against like Roach Ravager based compositions. Um, although obviously there's some uh, there's some advantages to play uh, playing either or. or. Apparently, um, and I will try and see if I can make a video about this in the near future, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. But apparently the new standard right now, like the much more recent standard in South Korea, is to open up battle cruisers. So we saw better cruises first off when uh, when November came around. A couple of widow mines actually hold that thought. Oh, that could be painful. Oh god, yep. No, Protoss players are excellent at splitting against that kind of thing because they have been widow mine dropped for years. Not very common at this point in the game to go for widow mine drops. But anyways, um, we we had a patch a couple of months ago, or well, at this point I guess almost a year ago where the better cruiser became much more popular. And for a while, it was very common to go for the better cruiser opener, just because it allowed you to still transition towards a pretty standard mid-game. Now, apparently, players have gotten so good at defending against it that it kind of fell out of style again. By the way, these Widow Mines still burrow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeez. Such a painful set of losses. Oh my god, what's going on here?! Anyways, apparently, once again, what I'm trying to say with many words, uh, better cruiser, good unit. People are making them again. Yay. <laughs> I think that about sums it up. Anyways, uh, we have to keep paying attention here, because Cure, he's not going to slow down, okay? Like, Cure is the kind of player who will attack at not just one or two different angles, but he will go for three or four. 
How do you micro it? I'm not entirely sure either. <laughs> His APM gets off the charge really quickly. So we'll see, uh, we'll try and see, keep an eye on that. Actually, so far, Impact is the one with over five, or over eight buttons a second so far in this game. Only six here for the Terran. I can guarantee you, though, it goes up real quick once the Terran splits and whatnot start happening. Anyways, he's the kind of guy that will start laying down the law. At the same time, Cure is trying to go for a bit of a counterattack. There's a couple of Widow Mines set up as well. He's pushing right over at the fourth base and then also dropping inside of the main. Looks like so far the control here is Solid Queen still target, firing down those Medivacs. And even though they will be picked off, a lot of those Marines still get a ton of kills. We did see the defense at home as well, so Cure not losing too much. A couple of those Widow Mines actually sitting there for safety purposes too. Overseer gets killed, and while Impact has been attempting counterattacks for a little while, and now he's finally getting some good damage done. Well, I say that and then the Widow Mines explode. It's not really been too impactful just yet. Fourth Command Center gets secured just fine. And Cure once again keeps on macroing. Planetary Fortress here in the center. There is that one Zerkling burrowed on the ground, so at the very least he knows exactly what's going on. But still, Cure has been able to continuously put on pressure. And look at the creep threat here, right? It's really been halted. I love... Actually, this is really cool. I've not really seen anyone do that. That's so sick. Okay, so this is the first note, okay? Everything that Cure has done so far is quote-unquote standard at the highest level of Terran player, right? I like this. Not seen a lot of top-level Terran players do this. Putting Widow Mines on the perimeters of the creep. So when a queen comes in and waddles around and maybe reinforcements run through, uh, they get shot by that Widow Mine. And obviously that means the creep is once again going to be halted. Really cool. So actually, these have a lot of kills too. I mean, this one at the very least is 12. One over here. And only one over here, too. But Widow Mine's relatively cheap. If you have the resources, you can pull it off. Oh, my God, dude. That was a 34 Widow Mine hit right there. 34 Zerklings ended up dying in the blink of an eye. Insane once again. Oh, my God, dude. He's getting so much value out of these Widow Mines. I'm both disgusted and amazed at the same time. <laughs> now, I joked about it earlier, right? Like, seriously, though. Oh, once again, sick drop right over here. Uh, No, that base is gone. Oh, he's so sick so good. Um, for the longest time, Protoss players have been dealing with uh, Widowmine drops. They've been uh, dealing with those ever since like the unit got first introduced in like Heart of the Swarm. And for a little while, we saw that as well in Zerk versus Terran, but I mean, early game, Zerk obviously has Queens, whereas Protoss has a couple of Stalkers. And let's be real, Queens are pretty good when it comes to picking up air units, and usually the Widowmines carrying those, uh, those uh, wid or rather the Metavex carrying those Widowmines are going to be picked off just fine. I like this quite a bit so far, though. Going for some mid-game Widow Mine drops, and it's dealing an awful lot of damage. Now, he needs to be careful, yeah. You cannot overstay your welcome. But I said earlier, still counts. Losing drones, I mean, losing 46 drones at the 6-minute mark, very painful. Losing it, though, 13 minutes into the game, not that big of a deal, because if you look right now at the work account here for Impact, he still has a very healthy amount of stuff, right? He has a healthy amount of resources coming in. He needs to be careful, though. Can't fight on top of the Planetary Fortress, and he does decide to back off. A couple of Zerklings burrowed everywhere as well. Cure on top of the defenses, actually, as well, while also simultaneously dealing the damage. Right now, okay, there is going to be a switch towards the Fusion Core. We see a Tech Lab on one of the Starports and then a Reactor on the other. So this is certainly going to be advanced ballistics for those Liberators. Ultras definitely rule the ground at this point, but once Liberators come into play, it's very difficult to actually play the units properly. That's why we do see the addition right now of Infestors too, Lending Fungal Growths and stuff is gonna continue allow him to dominate the ground. Still though, when I talk about the ground fight, right, I'm especially talking about the fight on creep. As soon as these Ultralists move off creep, it's possible for the Terran to kite against them, even with that speed upgrade. Uh, looks like the majority of the Ultras do, uh, do still live, and while some of the Widow Mines right now do also do some friendly fire, I don't think there's gonna be enough right here for Zerk to break through this, no. Every single time he tries to move across. Well, yeah, okay. It is going to force the Council at the Brandies, but every single time he moves across, uh, there's the Terran player falling back to the Planetary Fortress, and that Planetary is a very strong staging ground. Once again, spotted those Zerklings from burrowing as well. Impact is absolutely in control of this game at this point. Now, I've been reading the YouTube comments, okay? I don't watch these games before I cast them. I've been reading the YouTube comments, and I've seen a lot of people upset in the late game of Zerk versus Terran, where... That apparently, like, some people have accused me of being biased, of, of, like, casting only games where Zerk wins or something. Like, some people have made me sound like I've got some sort of political agenda. It's like, no, 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 dude, I just love casting and watching StarCraft, that's about it. It's like, no, 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 Loco, you're specifically choosing games where Zerk is winning, so Terran players think they're, like, I don't know. Anyways, uh, we have seen many games 
I'll be honest with you. Where the Zerg player is certainly behind and then manages to come back. It all comes down right now to Cure. He's certainly in a good spot here, but he needs to be extremely careful. If he allows Zerk a little bit of wiggle room, all of a sudden we're going to see those Brute Lords, we're going to see those Infestors, and the game is going to be very tricky to win. So far, nice. A little bit of Micro. Pushing off the creep. Oh, dude, some big... Oh! <laughs> dude, those Widowmine hits are massive. Once again, we do see some counter-aggression as well, but Liberator's now joining the fray. Not going to be that big of a deal. These Widowmine drops are insane. I wish I had a statistic to show you exactly how many Widowmine kills were made, but... I mean, I guess 40 Widowmines were picked off in total by Zerk, but I guess that's, you know, 10 Zerklings for every Widowmine. <laughs> Can't quite do the math, but I wish we could see the value that one unit in particular has brought to the table. But so far, you can see the cost efficiency right here for Terran is massive. The thing is, though, whenever that's the case, Zerk is still mining more, right? So if you trade really efficiently, that's great and all if you have the economic advantage. When you don't have the economic advantage, it can become a bit of a disaster. Now, this is a great move here. Uh, well, there's an Ultralisk and a couple of Zerklings hiding up north, so they were uh, checking out, I guess, the world of sleepers. Maybe they were dreaming. The Emerald Dream. Is that in StarCraft? It's not, but it's all good. Dude, he's been putting on so much pressure. Like, if if I was the Zerk player in this game, right, I'd absolutely hate playing against Cure. Let's be real for a second. This man, I, I said it at the beginning. Oh my god, did that thing just disappear? I think it did. Um... I said at the beginning, like, he's the kind of Terran player who likes to just simply put on the pressure and get that tempo advantage. Now, it feels like Impact has been up with his back against the wall for a little while. And once again, Kira is ready to go for another move. If he can defend that attack, he's going to be in a pretty good spot to transition to watch those Zerk spellcasters that are very, very good. Are there still any Infestors remaining? No, it doesn't look like it. I think they were accidentally sent across. Oh, that is a Terran army that's caught off guard. Luckily for him, there's still a couple of Widow Mines available as well, and a couple of those Medivacs too, to pick up those very endangered Terran units. Liberators now uh, being shot out of the sky as well by Impact, who brought a couple of Infestors to the party, but still, there is that one tactical nuke. And as if there weren't already enough drones killed in this game, the total right now is at 59. Once again, a couple of them end up dying. Somehow that ghost survived. I don't know how that happened either. Did he actually snipe down all of those overseers? Oh my god. It's just a handful of ghosts. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh my god. Oh my god. These widow mines, dude. It's insane. But because there's constant pressure, right? He's trying to send his units every direction just to, uh, to, uh, to hold any incoming drops anyways. So I guess he has just purposefully... Why is he not cleaning this up? Dude. If these Widow Mines get another shot off, I'm gonna cry. I think they will. I guess he was so worried about, like, another push towards the right-hand side of the map because that has happened every single time. Once again, the Widow Mines, they're ready to go. They get another big hit off. One of them gets picked off, too, by Zerk, but that was a massive connection. I feel like Impact could have just taken care of all of those Widow Mines with ease, but he was busy splitting his army everywhere, and while this is going on, Cure is expanding. Bottom left, top left, he's going in every single direction, moving towards the bottom right hand corner as well, another nuke now being sent across the map, that ghost is still alive, it's taking a little bit of splash damage, but it gets picked off, and that means that the GG is called Cure lays down the law, continuously puts on a ridiculous amount of pressure, and he is the one who obtains the victory. Now I'm curious, right? Can I, well, curious, haha. <laughs> But Cure apparently averaging 327 APM in this game and Impact up to 475. That's kind of crazy. I actually anticipated Cure to be a little bit higher in APM at this point in the game. I mean, on average, obviously, usually it does climb. Maybe the game wasn't long enough for that to happen. But usually these, uh, these top-level Terran players, especially back in the StarCraft 1 days, right? They were the ones with a ridiculous amount of actions per minute, all the way up to like 500, 600. Anyways, as far as the total units lost go, look at that Terran cost efficiency. Very nice. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below if you want to see more. You know what to do. Click that subscribe button so you get notifications as soon as I upload future content as well. And if you really enjoy the content and you wanted to support me directly, you can either click the join button right next to the subscribe button, or you can check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash tv. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you once again in the next one.